any mining companies out there, please mine more nickel. Go for efficient, you know, as environmentally friendly nickel mining at high volume. Tesla will give you a con giant contract for a long period of time. <laughs> Welcome. You heard what Elon said. Now, let's do a deep dive into nickel with Rodney Hooper from RK Equity. So during the conference call, Elon Musk made a huge pitch for nickel. What are your thoughts? So if you're going to build a 500-mile semi, you need in and around 1,000 kilowatt hours of battery pack. And to compare that to the Model 3, that's roughly, let's call it 15 or 16 Model 3s to every semi. So if you're going to produce 10,000 semis, that's 150 or 160,000 Model 3s you aren't going to produce. When you, you know, produce a semi, the, the, the target goal is to maximize payload, what you can carry in the semi, which means that you need the highest energy density battery pack that you can to maximize the payload. So you're going to want a high nickel battery pack for that, and you're going to want to maximize energy density and the weight of the battery. So if that's what you're talking about, well, you're competing against the Model 3, the Model Y, the Roadster, you know, the S and the X. Suddenly, we've got a, you know, a huge competitive force happening within Tesla for the high nickel energy you know, density packs. So from a nickel perspective, um, something like a Model 3, you're looking, uh, depending on the size of the battery pack, around 55 kilos of nickel. And with the Tesla Semi being around 15 to 16 Model 3s equivalent, you're looking at something in the order of around 850 kilos of nickel. And nickel, it's not any nickel that can go into a, a, a EV battery. You need a nickel sulfate, and that's got to, effectively, it's a derivative of class 1 nickel. Just to give you guys some background, there are two classes of nickel. Class 1 refers to nickel with a purity of 99.8% as a minimum, while class 2 comprises of less pure nickel products that have a purity of less than 99.8%. An example of this is nickel pig iron. And just to add, about 65% of all nickel that is produced is used in stainless steel. Batteries only make up about 5% of total nickel use. Uh, and the lead and lag, it's the same like lithium. You do not just flick a switch and a nickel mine comes on stream. There's permitting, there's construction, there's commissioning, and there's ramping up. And you're always scaling from a much higher process route than what you tested during, uh, you know, pilot and feasibility. Suddenly now you're digging out a massive ore body. The waste rock is different from you know, you're getting a different composition of materials in the ore body versus what you, what you do in sampling. So it always takes time, and you're looking at at least five to seven years, whereas in a, a, you can build a cell plant in 12 to 18 months. You can build a cathode plant also in a much shorter space of time. If it's in China, you're talking about China speed. You know, it can be done really quickly. So you've got to have a very long lead time to getting nickel mines into production. He knows that. He knows the shortages. And also, it seems to me that um, his demands, his, his, uh, his uh, battery cell demands and his battery raw material demands are going up in increasing volumes. But the semi changes everything. I was never sure. And there were some skeptics who said the semi would never be built. But now we're talking about, I mean, if you sell... 10,500 mile semis, you need 10 gigawatt hours of batteries. To just put that in perspective, the entire EV market last year, battery passenger EV market, was 95.6 gigawatt hours. So we're talking about one model of Tesla using more than 10% of the entire EV market last year, not to mention how many Model Ys he's going to sell or Model 3s. So He's got, he's got some work on his hands, uh, and as I said to you, the interesting thing of what he said there is, you know, it's field of dreams, you know, build it and we will come, as in, it doesn't look like he wants to get into nickel mining, but he certainly wants the nickel miners to get onto the, on the business of nickel mining. So who do you think he was talking to exactly? 
when he made those well, comments. Well, he's, he's talking to all of the players, but he's talking to the guys that can produce nickel sulfate, but he was sulfate, but he was very specific about sustainability and, he, you know, the provenance of where that comes, he wants, he wants uh, low carbon emission and sustainable production sources. So that would typically favor higher grade nick, uh, you know, nickel sulfide deposits as opposed to the laterite, lower grade laterite deposits. They're less energy intensive. So let's just stop here for a second. There are two type of nickel deposits. There are laterite deposits, which are low grade ores that you just dig up, but are expensive to process as they are low grade. While on the other hand, you have nickel sulfide deposits in which you target higher grades of nickel with deeper and more expensive mining, but the cost of processing is lower as you were starting with a higher grade. So what could Tesla do in order to sort of secure their supply chain in nickel and not be vul vulnerable to any price spikes? Like short of buying out, um, buying they, they out can't, companies. So yeah, so that's a good that's a good question because if you do an off take, that doesn't immunize you to price fluctuations. That just immunizes you on supply. So the one way that you could do it, in my opinion, and not get into the um, into the mining business is do a physical streaming deal. And what's where that you, exactly? So a physical streaming deal is effectively where you, where you assist and possibly give upfront financing to the mine without owning any of it. So just prepaying on your stream, but you effectively say, right, I, I will buy um, nickel sulfate from you for $7.50 or $8 a pound or what have you and do a fixed price off take contract and then give some sort of a prepayment on that basis. A lot of the streaming deals will pay you sort of your OPEX or around your operating cost on delivery, but they will give you some kind of a prepayment to assist you and they could do that. Mm. I, I, I favor that. It, it sort of, it helps the mine because the guys need a lot of capital to build. And on the other hand, you know, Tesla can raise financing a lot cheaper than a junior miner can if they're dealing with a junior miner. And uh, they stay out of the mining business, but they fix the price. So then you can, then they can work on uh, operating efficiencies in terms of building battery cells, scale, all sorts of other things to get their battery price per kilowatt hour down. They're dealing with a known entity. So if you have a fear, if you, if you can, um, if you believe you can see your, your future path to getting to 100 kilowatt hours $100 per kilowatt hour battery pack costs factoring in a $7.50 or an $8 whatever it is nickel sulfate price then why not remove that risk and get on the business with it because Elon has said I think it was in the Q4 earnings call his biggest threat is battery capacity and your biggest threat to battery capacity is raw materials as I say, if, if you can uh, absorb the cost, the uh, sorry, on a high nickel uh, battery cell, like an NCM811, 54% of the cost is cathode. And of that, according to benchmark, and 44% and of cathode is nickel. So over 20% of your cell cost in a high nickel cathode, and 811 is not dissimilar to NCA. So let's just broadly say it's similar to what Tesla is doing. It's the biggest cost that you need to shut down is nickel. And that's why he mentioned. So it's like 22% of the cost is nickel. So you really need to shut that down mm -hmm. and, and have a handle on it. So I, I, I'm in favor of saying um, if Tesla can see its way to very low cost battery packs, cells and packs, absorbing a fixed nickel price, then get on with the business of locking that in and and focus on lowering uh, nickel, uh, you know, your battery cell costs by volume, by improvement in energy density, tweaking with the anode, you know, the silicon graphite, improving, improving the technology. Don't worry about the raw materials. If you can absorb it, pay the price. And what's the state of the nickel market? Like, is if there's going to be an explosion of demand, 
is that something that could be switched on? Is the capacity there or is there a chance that there could be a shortage in the next few years? I think that's the thesis is a lot of people and I've seen some enormous price projections in the future. But again, I'd have to warn uh, a little like cobalt. Uh, yes, there was a, um, a provenance and a sourcing and a human rights issue that came with cobalt. But, you know, even if cobalt was mined in Australia totally and not the DRC, at $100,000 a ton, people were going to switch out of cobalt anyway. Mm -hmm. So make no mistake that if nickel runs ahead of itself on price, they will look to thrift nickel out of the mix. And that's why I say, you know, there's a point in time where uh, an LFP, uh, an LFP uh, a cathode will make a lot of sense at a, at a, a very high nickel price. Mm -hmm. And you won't care about a bigger battery pack and range because nickel's going to get priced out of the market. So I think, you know, everyone needs to be careful about uh, where that goes. There's a point at which that becomes uneconomic as well. But as things stand, the fundamentals for nickel look solid and for nickel sulfate. Um, certainly, uh, given, you know, how many deposits uh, are suitable to supply into that and again how long a mine takes you know a, a, you can build a battery cell plant in 12 to 18 months it takes a minimum of five to seven years to get a mine up and running so raw materials are key i think you're seeing elon uh, react to that but his preference clearly is still on the business of technology uh you know you know uh, aut autonomous driving battery tech, you know, uh, those types of things. And that makes sense. Mm. So, uh, but he needs, he needs the miners to do their thing. Um, and as I say, that is a long lead time. You can't just wish a mine overnight. Um, and uh, to my mind, a compromise of not getting into the business of mining, but securing a long-term supply rather than just do an offtake that leaves you open to the volatility of price. I think st physical streaming deals are a better route. And can you just uh, briefly discuss the difference between an offtake and a physical streaming deal? So uh, an offtake is a, is a physical streaming deal. It just doesn't fix price. So what you have is formulas where guys will pay based on certain things. So it might be the LME price in lithium. It might be based on something else, a basket of prices. But you're saying, I'll take a certain tonnage, but I will pay you based on a formula. With a physical streaming deal, I guess it's possible you could also do that basis. But I'm, I'm proposing physical streaming deals where you agree a fixed price. Mm. And you can do, do offtake deals I mean, a physical streaming with a fixed price is an offtake agreement with a fixed price. And mm. it, it's happened in lithium. I'm saying I think that um, as long as the maths works and you can see your way to cheaper sell prices uh, based off other efficiencies and improvements in technology and other parts of the, of the battery, that it, to my mind, Given where prices are now, it's a good time now to lock in fixed prices when, when spot prices are low. If you want to come and offer, ask for fixed prices when there's, there's a run and there's a shortage of things, it's going to be difficult. Now mm. is the time, in my opinion. Mm. Excellent. All right. Well, I think that was an awesome introduction into nickel. And as I found with lithium, you know, you start off thinking one video will cover this, but this has just raised way more questions than answers. So I've got a feeling we're going to have to follow this up with quite a few more videos to really get a good understanding of this. Look, I, yeah, I think that it's, it's, uh, it is something to cover. And as I said, if you look at roughly at the high nickel split in the cost of a battery cell of a high nickel cell, the biggest cost at over 20% is nickel, mm. nickel sulfate. So... If you're going to bed down a cost, and then after that is lithium. All right, Rodney. Well, look, thanks again for you know having this chat. Really appreciate it, and I'm sure we'll be having another chat fairly soon. Definitely. Thanks. Uh, good to chat to you again, Ivan, and uh, stay safe. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed that introduction to Nickel. And for our Patreons, I'll be releasing a bonus video in which Rodney and I cover LFP and NCA batteries. And for everyone else, good news, as I hope to be releasing the next episode of the Tesla documentary series covering Elon's battle with the SEC. And to conclude, a big shout out to Shamim, along with a special thanks to Bradford Ferguson from Halter Ferguson Financial. And thank you to all the Patreons that make these episodes possible. And remember, all content in this video is simply my opinion. I do not recommend buying or selling any financial instruments. So till next time, I'll see you guys soon.